Hello and welcome to GHTV. I'm John Patty. And I'm Chantal Luano, joining John at the desk today. Here's a look at some of the top headlines of this week. A shooting east of Toronto has left an elderly couple dead. Police were called to the emergency room of a Coburg hospital after a man allegedly shot his wife in the head. The shooting caused panic and confusion in the hospital, and other patients ran for cover. When police arrived, two officers allegedly shot the man. Ontario's Special Investigations Unit has taken over this case, and it won't release the names of the victims because it has not received family consent. The SIU has called in cases involving death at the hands of police. Toronto police are looking for a suspect after a prank call shut down King Street. On Thursday, a man called police to say someone entered a building with a gun. And he said that there may have been hostages involved. The emergency task force was called and they surrounded the area of King, King and Blue's Jay's Way. The area was closed off for about three hours and this disrupted the pedestrian, vehicle and streetcar traffic. A New York woman is under arrest for robbing a bank with two unusual accomplices, a taxi driver and her six-year-old daughter. Police in Long Island say the woman entered a bank and gave the teller a note. She allegedly walked out with some cash and got into a waiting cab. Her daughter had been in the cab the whole time. Police later stopped the taxi and arrested the woman. She's now been charged with robbery and endangering the welfare of a child. A 10-year-old girl in Texas is facing deportation from the U.S. Rosa Maria Hernandez was being transported to a hospital to have emergency surgery. That's when the U.S. officials stopped the ambulance and realized that she was undocumented. The, the Department of Homeland Security let the ambulance through but followed it to the hospital. They took her to the children's shelter once she had recovered. Hernandez has been living in the U.S. since she was three months old. Critics say that this is a representative of Trump's harsh, harsh immigration policies. Now, here's Brandon Vieira with your entertainment update. Hey Chantal, Selena Gomez fans have a lot of questions for her and one of them is, did Selena break up with her current Canadian boyfriend for her former one? According to People magazine, Selena Gomez and The Weeknd split up after 10 months of dating. It seems as though their grueling schedule seemed to be the main issue between them, but many are wondering if Justin Bieber has anything to do with their split. A day before the breakup between Gomez and The Weeknd was reported, Gomez was spotted having brunch and attending church with Bieber. Gomez and Bieber haven't been together since 2014, but after Gomez's kidney transplant, it was reported that Bieber wanted to rekindle their friendship. According to multiple reports, Bieber and Gomez's time together has been nothing more than friendly conversation. However, the day reports came out about her meetup with Bieber, the weekend followed a slew of Gomez's loved ones on Instagram, including her best friend and her mother. None of the parties have commented on the news, but reports share that although their relationship is over for now, the weekend and Gomez are still staying in touch. Whether you're on Team Jelena or Team Sleekend, you're going to want to stay tuned because it looks like Selena Gomez's love story isn't over yet. House of Cards production is being suspended and the plug may be pulled by Netflix earlier than expected. According to Deadline Hollywood, Netflix has decided to make this upcoming sixth season of House of Cards its last. This comes after actor Anthony Rapp shared a story from 1986. He detailed that when he was 14, he attended a party at Kevin Spacey's apartment. At the end of the night, an intoxicated Spacey allegedly picked him up, placed him on his bed, and climbed on top of Rap before he was able to get away. Spacey tweeted a public apology saying that he does not remember this incident from over 30 years ago and apologizes for his inappropriate, drunken behavior. It was in this same apology that Spacey decided to come out as a gay man. This drew a lot of criticism from actors in the LGBTQ community, including Billy Eichner, Wanda Sykes, and Zachary Quinto. They accused him of using his coming out story as a way of deflecting the molestation allegations he was faced with. Even the president of GLAAD had spoken out about Spacey's apology, saying it comes, stories about coming out should not be used to deflect from allegations of sexual assault. Spacey has yet to comment on the reaction he has received from his formal apology. That's a wrap in entertainment news this week. I'm Brandon Vieira, and this has been your entertainment update. Now here's Anna Okoto with a look at sports. Thank you, Brandon. My name is Anna Okoto. The Toronto Raptors have two games left of their West Coast trip and they're starting to catch fire. The Raptors beat the Portland Trailblazers 99-85. to Toronto's bench was great, so great that the Trailblazers were held to just six points in the second quarter. That was a franchise low for the team. Lucas Nogueira scored a season high of 17 points. DeMar DeRozan scored 25 and k got himself another double-double. The Raptors' next game is on Wednesday against the Utah Jazz at 9 p.m. While the Raptors were in the West, Toronto FC was taking care of business in the East. TFC played their first playoff game Monday night against the New York Red Bulls. Victor Vasquez put TFC on the board with the goal in the 8th minute. The Reds tied it up with a penalty kick in the 48th. 
But have no fear, Sebastian Giovinco is here. Giovinco scored the game winner with a beautiful free kick. This marks his 14th career MLS goal from a free kick. TFC faces the Reds at home for game two on Sunday at 3 p.m. My name is Anna Okoto. Back to you, Chantel. Thanks, Anna. Toronto police have dropped about a dozen charges that were part of an undercover operation. Over 70 people were charged in relation to public sexual activity last November. Most of the charges were for bylaw violations, but one was a criminal charge. Some critics have said that operation was homophobic, and, that, and that's because all, almost all of the charges were given to men. Police say that they launched the operation because neighbors have com had complained. Ontario will soon make it illegal to protest around abortion clinics in the province. The bill that has been passed means eight clinics will be given between 50 to 150 meters of protection. No anti-abortion advice, intimidation or obstruction of service will be allowed under this law. Attorney General Yazer Nakvi says the bill was passed in a very short time with all parties working well together. Police are issuing a public warning that potentially lethal Halloween stamped fentanyl blotters may be in Winnipeg. The blotters are about the size of a stamp with an image of a witch riding a broom. Police seized six fentanyl blotters during a drug investigation in Fort Rouge area on Friday. The investigation has led to an arrest of four people who are now facing multiple drug-related charges. There is a concern that with Halloween, a blotter may fall into the hands of a child and be mistaken as a piece of paper or temporary tattoo. Police say that if anyone comes across a blotter, do not touch it and call 911. A flying instructor and student are dead after crashing near Springbank Airport just west of Calgary. The plane belonged to Springbank Air Training College. The incident occurred during a takeoff lesson, according to a Transport Canada report. And that same report says the crash took place just one mile south of the airport. As of right now, all remaining investigations will be taking place with the RCMP. Now here's Alex Hadziak with his take on the news and other stuff. Thanks John, so Halloween is basically over for this year, which means one thing and one thing only. It's time to get ready for Christmas. There's just over 50 days left until the most wonderful time of the year, but that's way too long to wait, which is why I'm here to tell you how you can start living life on the Christmas side right now. First things first, say thank you a lot, because when you're in the spirit of the holidays, giving thanks is key. But it's not enough to do your regular Canadian level of thanking, you need to amp it up a notch by thanking people for things they didn't even do. Like thanking this random person that I found on the internet for the free healthcare we enjoy. Thanks, dude. Another key ingredient of Christmas is the music, so take your iPhone or your Walkman and get rid of every song that isn't festive. You may find that you only have a couple of Christmas songs, but don't worry about it. After you play them a couple hundred times, you'll find yourself either in the Christmas spirit or it won't matter. And how can you spell Christmas without Santa? So write a letter to Santa and just tell him all about your life. Did you have pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week? Let him know. Do you have a crippling fear of intimate relationships? Let him know. Are you silently hoping that this strike never ends and then you never have to return to the real world? Let him know. Just be sure to also send him a link to the newest episode of GHTV because Santa deserves the best. And lastly, just stay home wrapped up in a blanket and drink hot chocolate because the strike's not over and the chances of full classes resuming anytime soon aren't good. But hey, have a Merry Christmas regardless. Back to you, John and Chantel. Thanks, Alex. Sophia has just been given a Saudi Arabian citizenship, but she's not an average woman. She's human-like robot. The move was made at a technology development summit in Saudi Arabia. The country has been heavily criticized for this action in the light of history of women's rights violations. In particular, Sophia was granted citizenship without wearing a headscarf and was not joined by a male escort. Those two actions are illegal for women in the country. Sophia previously rose to fame after beating Jimmy Fallon at a rock, paper, scissors. That's it for GHTV. This is Chantal Oano. And I'm John Patty. Thank you for watching. See you next week.